The life gain challenge is here. What is going on everybody and welcome to our second week of the mini game magic arena challenge today We are kicking off things with a life gain challenge. I cannot wait last week We obviously had the discard challenge week We pit three of you guys against each other and had some amazing results But death's ace was the winner and we're actually gonna be kicking off with death's ace in the life gain challenge now For you guys that don't know what this is essentially what we have been doing is going to our discord community which you can join via the link down below challenging you guys to build a deck with a specific goal in mind last week it was to discard as many cards from the opponent's hand as possible this week we're looking to gain as much life as we possibly can uh now keep in mind with that the the game is not set on us winning we are not here to win the game we are here to gain as much life as we can so keep that in mind as you're building your decks if you would like to suggest a deck for this challenge, you can do so again via that Discord chat. Uh, there is a link there or, or a channel there for deck lists for stream, and that is where we are hosting this. So please do give us a suggestion. We would absolutely love to have you as part of this community. Uh, and I'm really excited to jump into today's deck. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, guys, before we jump in and actually talk about this list, I just want to let you know uh, we are going to be doing a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. We did the exact same thing last week, so we are kicking this week off with Death's Ace. Really excited about this list. This is about as stock a list when it comes to angels as you can possibly imagine, but I will say it's pretty awesome. And there's a few extra little tweaks that I think are really, really cool. So Death's Ace, thank you so much, first of all, for submitting this deck. Congratulations on the win last week. Let's see how we do this week. So uh, as you can tell, a lot of this is exactly what you would expect uh, for good reason. We've got Soul Wardens here. We've got Speaker of the Heavens to hopefully spit out some more angels for us. Uh, we've got Bishop of Wings. So anytime an angel we control dies, we create a spirit. And anytime an angel enters the battlefield, we gain four life. Uh, Righteous Valkyrie, one of the all-time best angels in my opinion this card is absolutely amazing going to be gaining us a lot of life and hopefully buffing up our team in the process uh, we've got aspirant here as a way to cheapen up all of our angel spells and i'm really stoked to have this in here we've got resplendent angel that every time we gain five life in a turn we get to spit out a four four angel uh, which obviously procs the righteous valkyrie the soul warden all kinds of stuff now in case that's not enough uh we've got rocks faith mender uh, which essentially says, if you gain life, you instead gain twice that much life, which seems pretty good to me. Now, we also have Aetherflux Reservoir. We gain one spell for each ca uh, each spell we've cast every turn. Uh, we have got Angel of Destiny to help gain us some life. We've got Lyra Dombringer to help gain us some life. And we've got Valkyrie Harbinger to, again, spit out a lot of angels. So basically, we just have as much life gain as possible. Now, uh, Death says, I believe I got this correct because I couldn't copy your list over directly. I did double check the numbers. It looks like we've got 61 cards in the list. A little bit odd, and maybe I misclicked somewhere along the way, so I apologize if that's the case, but uh, this list looks amazing. It is gonna be super, super fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see how much life we can gain. All right, guys, here we are for our first of three best of one games. And this is a very, very strong start, to be brutally honest. We've got a beautiful one, two, three here with Resplendent Angel sitting at the top. And then, of course, Angel of Destiny later on. This is about as good a hand as we could possibly imagine. Uh, this is also, if we can keep these two around on turn three, this Resplendent Angel will trigger and just give us as much uh, life off the early turns as possible. So I'm very excited to see how this works out. Looks like we're against a uh one of those uh brown decks we'll see how that goes uh keep in mind guys this is the to the the highest life total that we achieve in a game so uh if for some reason we uh we lose early or something along those lines and we only get to like say 25 life that's all we get to it is what it is we can't help it so we're gonna do the best we can to make sure that doesn't happen but let's go ahead get bishop of wings down and get our first life gain of the week we'll go ahead and attack in Sitting at 21 life right off the bat. Love it. A uh, little worried later on down the road of what this deck will have because this is going to be, I assume, kind of an Ugin style deck, uh, which is terrifying. Uh, absolutely terrifying, in fact. So we are, we're going to do the best we can, but let's go ahead and gain a couple extra life here with that Radiant Fountain and then throwing in that Resplendent Angel. This should give us quite a bit of life. Uh, it's going to buff us up a lot. Down to, or up to 28, I should say, excuse me, and go ahead and attack in for two here. 
Nothing crazy, of course, but we do get an extra little angel, which then procs again. And so we are just going to get hopefully a ton of life already up to 33, starting off super, super strong. Death Zace, I love it, my friend. You are doing phenomenal. So, oh, uh, I mean, I mean, we just do this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's just do this. Unfortunately, that does mean we only gain one life here, which isn't the best, uh, but we are going to go ahead and attack in, get them down to eight. And we'll see how this goes, guys. A uh, little worried about the incoming Ugin. I can only assume that that's going to happen and they're going to be able to sweep our board, <laughs> uh, which is terrifying. But it's OK. It's OK. Uh, we're sitting at 35 life looking pretty, pretty strong at the moment. There is the Ugin. Yeah. And there goes our board, guys. This is this is our board just gone, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But uh, We've got some answers. We've got some things we can do. Uh, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Um, we do have the Angel of Destiny here that we will hopefully be able to, to take some stuff down with. There's also gaining two life here. We also have a Bishop of Wings, which is quite good. But let's just go ahead. Let's be mana efficient. Let's play out the Angel of Destiny. Uh, crucially, this cannot be destroyed with Ugin, uh, which is very, very important. While the Bishop of Wings obviously can. And we just win the game. No, we don't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, interesting. Hold on one second. At the beginning of our set, if you have at least 15 or more life, each player... Oh, okay. If, if we uh, attack. Okay, well, they have Ulamog now. Uh, 37 might be all we get to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write that down because this is definitely going to be a, uh, a we lose very soon situation, uh, which is fine. It sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw this bishop out there. They're just probably going to tank it with the, the Ugin. Uh, it's definitely the safe play. Wow, and there's the Platinum Angel. Uh, yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the 12. I'm going to take the 12, guys. Let's do it. Yep, I'm taking it. It's fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> it's not fine. We're super dead. It's okay, though. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this out here. This is going to gain us four life, which crucially means that we do um, get another angel here, but it truthfully doesn't matter. We've only got 27 cards left in our list, uh, and so unfortunately, we're probably just super dead here, but you know what? This was a really solid effort against a deck that is very, very difficult for us to really deal with, so I'm okay with it, and you know what? This has been a fun one. I love this. Uh, game one, getting up to 37. That is pretty high. That's pretty high. I think we can do better, Death Ace. I think we can. So we're going to try. Um, yep. That's fine. We'll see what happens. They're going to reveal a card from outside. This is an incredibly fun deck, by the way. If you have not played this colorless deck, oh, is it amazing. Uh, it just does so much fun stuff. There's another Power Stone Shard. Gaining a little bit of life. Uh, man, what a very, very cool deck. Now here they could just sweep our board, which is truthfully what they should do. Uh, it just would be the easiest thing to do. They can minus six, still keep Ugin around. Uh, they're only gonna minus two though, that's interesting. Um, and yeah, I mean, they just attack in. Um, yep, that's fine. Uh, I mean, we don't have to block, but I'm going to. We're going to lose anyway, so why not just go for it? And there's another Valkyrie. I'm going to go ahead and concede this game. We'll go ahead and jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game two. And again, we've got a pretty strong hand here. Double speaker is great. We've got the Resplendent Angel. I'm going to try it. Uh, we don't have any of our, like, enter the battlefield uh, triggers that we're kind of looking for, but that's okay. I think we can do pretty well with this one. Um, we also have the Lyra Dawnbringer, of course, which is just a ridiculously good card. I'm actually going to go ahead and play that Radiant Fountain. We're going to throw the other speaker out, and then we are going to get an attack in. Interesting, they played the World Tree on turn one, which is a little scary to me. Uh, double World Tree, in fact. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and play the Resplendent Angel. Uh, tr cr very, very crucially, I know we could have played the Bishop of Wings here uh, to, to proc this later on, but I kind of want to be mana efficient as best I can. Um, and so I'm actually okay with doing that. Now, we actually should be able to, to proc this a couple of times this coming turn, so I'm not terribly worried about it anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Gains us a couple life. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and attack in. And then let's go ahead and activate these double abilities, which is amazing because now 
already we're at 37 life, which is absolutely amazing, and then 41. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that down. Uh, the opponent is just going to give up. So we got to 41 life, and it took all of two seconds. So <laughs> that was great. Death Ace, you're killing it. Let's go ahead and jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game three, and this is a bit of a slower start for us. Uh, if we do decide to keep, we've got the Dawn of Hope. We also have Bishop of Wings that we can theoretically get down, but a lot of these cards were going to be a little late to the party. I'm going to give it a shot. We're going to test it out. It may not be the best, uh, and if not, that's okay. But we're already sitting at a 41 life total is our highest game so far. That's pretty good, honestly. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and Death Ace, I hope that you are as well. The great thing about this list, and this is, um, I will say, the, the thing about this is that it's a very good deck in general, which means it can win the game pretty easily. The downside to that is that opponents are probably going to scoop at some point, as we've seen, uh, instead of just kind of pushing through and letting us kind of do our thing. And that's okay. I, I mean, obviously winning is great and all that kind of stuff, but we're obviously here just to see how much life we could get. So we'll see how it goes. Also, you'll notice we ranked up in between these games. Uh, the reason being, we actually started uh, a game and the opponent gave up like immediately. Uh, we, we played like two turns, got everything out basically, and they just, they lost. So I didn't want to count that. That wasn't really fair. Uh, I do want to make sure we get to see what the deck can do. It looks like our opponent, uh, might be not here. I don't know. Uh, we're going to try and stick it out. We're going to see what we can do. All right. They did play. Perfect. Uh, and there is the Bishop of Wings. That is actually really, really good. Um, I'm going to play... <sighs> hmm. I'm going to play the bishop expecting that it will probably get killed uh to be honest um in black I expect that we're going to see a good bit of like fatal push you know hand destruction maybe even uh I just expect some of that stuff so we'll see uh not positive what the best play will be here but dawn of hope does give us some options in terms of drawing cards later in the game which is really good so we'll see how this goes uh unless they decide to take it which they might there's a Heartless Act. Again, not unexpected, so that is fine. Uh, let's play this. I'm going to go ahead and just play out the Resplenda Angel. <clears throat> um, what we can kind of try and do next turn is play the Dawn of Hope, uh, then follow that up with the Radiant Fountain, which gains us life, which then allows us to actually draw an extra card. So um, for four mana, essentially, we can get a Dawn of Hope down and draw a card. Ugh, unless... <laughs> Um, all right, they choose one of those creature cards for you to discard. Um, I honestly think it's the Angel of Destiny, um, which kind of sucks, I'll be honest. Uh, but the reason being, the the way we want this to play out is that we have a longer game, and the, the Valkyrie actually allows us to kind of do that, so we'll we'll see. Um, we're, we're here to have fun, guys, we're not here to win, uh, so I want to make sure that we do the best we can. All right, the uh, the opponent's really thinking about the one card that we gave them so that they can discard it. Um, kind of interesting, but here we are. <laughs> uh, I love these graphics, by the way. I've not seen these. That's really, really cool. I like that a lot. The the party mechanic. Um, that's really awesome. All right. Uh, not a bad card at all, but I think we're going to stick to our game plan here. We're going to do this. We're going to play the Radiant Fountain. And then we're going to auto pay here to draw an extra card. And that's actually great. Just gives us that extra land uh, to allow us to make sure that we can hopefully get that Harbinger down pretty quickly here. Um, that's pretty good. That's about as great as we could have expected, to be honest. Uh, hopefully they don't have more discard for us. That's the only thing that I'm really not stoked about is that they might have some discard for us. But we'll see. Discards two cards and mills a card. Okay. Well, in that case... Um, Huh. So the question becomes, do we want to just keep the land, uh, which I don't think is a bad play because it does allow us to do the most later on, or do we keep the Aspirant? I'm actually going to keep the Aspirant. Uh, this essentially equates to um, us being able to, to play things for cheaper, and there's a land anyway, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Throw that out there. I will just go ahead and attack, of course. 
Um, and then next turn, we can always start spitting out some of this stuff, or if we can get a land, we can actually activate the ability on our Splendid Angel and do some major, major work. Okay, so we're going to have to sacrifice some stuff. Uh, that kind of sucks. I will, I think, go ahead and sacrifice this. We'll resolve that, and then we'll sacrifice this. Um, let's see what we can draw. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I mean, we play it. We play it out there, uh, and we go ahead and attack. We're just going to be as aggressive as we can, essentially. Um, they're going to have to sacrifice a thing here, so that's their one creature gone. I don't know why they didn't block. That seems a little odd. Uh, also, I'm going to go ahead and write down 24. I believe that was the highest total. I'll double check, of course, at some point, but... Uh, and we'll get rid of the aspirant. They do get that. That's fine, uh, but it's really not super helpful for them. There's a creature that we can actually just kind of jack. Um, all right, so let's see. Hmm. So here's the trick. I mean, at some point we just don't want to, to lose their stuff. This is a really nice little combo, by the way, that they've got going on. Uh, absolutely awesome. Um, we're gonna attack in, of course. And I think we're just gonna pass. Uh, I don't think this is a great play, but the reality is we don't want to give them more ammo for this Doom Foretold. Um, we're already going to be giving them some, which kind of sucks, so I'd rather not do that. Um, and I guess we could have attacked him with the Faithbender just to provide us with a little extra life, but here we go. They're going to attack in with Rankle, I assume, uh, and probably each have us discard a card. That way they're keeping us off of resources, a great play from the opponent. They also get whatever is discarded if it's not a land, so absolutely fantastic. They're not going to attack with Rankle. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I would not have expected that. Uh, so we obviously are going to take the Faithbender out, um, which they get. Man, we are really hurting for a land here. Um, I'm going to attack in. I'm going to let them block if they want with the Rankle. That's totally fine. If they don't want to, it's cool too. We're just going to deal as much damage as we can before we have to kill everything. All right, and crucially what that means is they don't get uh, the the Resplendent Angel. Uh, so I'd honestly rather it go that way than the other way. Uh, so that worked out pretty well considering we're going to have to discard a Soul Warden here, which is not the end of the world, but they do get it, um, which kind of sucks. But this is also going to get rid of the Doom Foretold, which is very, very important um, in this circumstance. We don't want to be continuously discarding or uh, or losing stuff to the, the Doom Foretold here. Um, we do have to discard this Soul Warden here, so we're going to lose that, uh, which kind of sucks. But it's not the end of the world. Uh, they get some, some life here for sure, which is good for them. Uh, and they're going to get another Soul Warden. <laughs> Which is scary. Very, very scary. Can we get something? There's the land that we needed a while ago. Um, ugh, bad luck, Death Ace. I don't know that we're going to get very far with this one. Um, I thought we would do okay, but uh, unfortunately, they are just killing us on this one. Um, that Doom Foretold is very, very clutch in a li against a life gain deck, because now they just steal all that life gain. Uh, and with these Soul Wardens, they're going to be gaining a lot of life back. They also just get to replay Croxa. And we die, I believe. So, unfortunately, uh, we only got to 24 on that one. That kind of sucks. Oh, Death Ace, I'm so sorry, my friend. Uh, but you know what? It was a tough matchup. It was a well-fought battle, uh, for sure. And so I'm not upset by it. Death Ace deck was amazing. We'll go ahead. We're going to go ahead and concede here. And we'll, uh, we'll jump to the summary of today's event. All right, guys, so let's take a minute to chat about Death's Ace deck. First of all, Death's Ace, thank you so much for the uh, submission. I really do appreciate it. And again, congratulations last week for winning the discard challenge. You put up a strong fight. So if we're looking at the games, the, the highest is definitely the second game with a life total of 41. That's pretty good. Uh, that's a good solid start to the week. Hopefully we can get some awesome deck lists later on. We've already got some great submissions to pit up against that. Uh, but overall, I really enjoyed this deck. This is a very classic tried and true angels list um we didn't get to see the aetherflux reservoir kind of play do its thing and we really didn't even get to see the valkyrie do as much as we had hoped uh just some tough matchups all around we actually played a few more games than you guys saw 
uh, but unfortunately some of the games ended very very quickly uh, and opponents conceding right away I just didn't feel right putting that in here so uh, wanted to give it the best shot we could I think we had some decent games and overall a very very fun list guys as a reminder if you would like to be a part of this challenge and hopefully win some proxies uh, that's right the winner does get five free proxies sent to them uh, please feel free you can uh, enter by submitting a deck list in the discord chat uh, that chat is down or the link for that is down below so please do check that out and guys thank you so much I really appreciate you all being here supporting these challenges and hopefully having a fun time doing it it's a great time to highlight all of you and the deck building skills you guys have so thank you guys so much check out part two coming out on Wednesday and then of course part three will be on Friday where we will announce the winner uh, Wednesday's episode we are going to be announcing the the challenge for next week just adds up so thank you guys so much I will see you on Wednesday